This is for you, gentlemen. Gentlemen of the Post Office Inspector's Service, I want to congratulate you for your fine work in moving the gold reserves of the United States to the inland cities. It was a big job, and you handled it with your usual efficiency. I'm sorry I can't greet each one of you personally, so I'm taking this method of expressing my appreciation and conveying the thanks of the people of the United States. Well, there's nothing I can add to what has already been said by the president. And now I suppose you're anxious to get back to your post, so I won't keep you. I'm glad you did buy a thing. Off to Millstown, eh, Davis? Taking the night plane, sir. Good luck. Thanks. Millstown calling Wilson in 55. I'm out on the field. Ceilings about 500, visibility poor. There's some patches of fog drifting around. Can you see the beacon? Can't see the beacon, can't see up here. It's pretty black. We just left the beam and are coming over. We should be over you in about two minutes. <laughs> no, don't go away, please. I just know something's going to happen. Oh, we fly through these fogs all the time. Can't I get you a cup of tea or something? Well, you might get me an aspirin. <laughs> Cut to cards, Miss Connie. Cut to cards. Relax, Debbie. Relax. Cut to cards just once, Miss Connie. I gotta find out if we're gonna get down out of here. Thank you. I know it. I just know something was going to happen. Any more news? Not yet. Do you think there's any danger? No. They come down through this stuff all the time. There's a man out there in the field leading them in right now. Coffee? No, no. I'd better go outside. Okay. Now you're right over the middle of the field, heading east. Make a left turn. Have you see up there? Can't see the field. They're still up too high. But that's dangerous. You'll be in right on schedule. All right, Wilson, make another left turn and you'll be heading west along the north side of the field. Go out in the valley about two miles and come in. Okay. Order me some ham and eggs. Can we get through to the airport or will we have to go to another field? We'll get in all right. Are they nervous back there? That youngster crying back there doesn't help. Tell them it's all in the day's work. <laughs> Is anything wrong? No. Are you nervous? No, I'm all right. I wish we could do something to keep that child quiet. She's going to make everyone nervous. I'd know what to do if I were in a theater. I've heard that name somewhere. <laughs> Never mind, it isn't important. It may be important. Forgive my ignorance, Miss Larimore, but just what do you do in the theater? Well, I sing. You sing? Good. Go ahead and sing. What, here? Certainly. It may ease things up a bit. They're awfully nervous back there. That's an idea. Go on. Hey, son, come here a minute. And sing as though you were passing your time away, you know. You certainly can play that thing, can't you? Yeah, I sure can. How would you like to sit right down here and play so that everyone can hear you? Sure. Will you? Play something that she can sing. All right. Oh, that one? No. That's all right. Go ahead. Here we are together, flying high.
2000, this stuff is pretty thick. How are you doing? We're all right. Hey, what's going on back there? Connie Larrymore is keeping them quiet with a song. Hey, get this. We have music with our landings. Listen. What's the idea? Oh. <laughs> Passengers are jittery and there's a singing star up there crooning them to sleep. Singing star? Do you see a singing star? Yeah. That's Connie Larrymore. Listen. Miss Larrymore is doing a song number for them up there in that plane. Is that so? Yeah. How do you know? I just heard it from Jeffrey on the field. The passengers were frightened. She's got them all quieted down. That makes a heroine of her, doesn't it? You're learning American ways very fast, Mr. Benez. Publicity is publicity. In any language, gentlemen. That club star faces death with song on her lips. Where's that telephone? And remember, she's on the contract to me. She's going to sing tonight at the Golden Eagle at 11. It's Stallings on the wire. I've got a story Honey for you. Honey Laramore, the nightclub gal, the great, gorgeous, glamorous heartbreaker, is singing to the passengers to keep them quiet. She just averted a near panic. You're okay now. Take it easy and straight down. Well, here we go. Thanks very much, Miss Larimore. Oh, what I need is a good cup of coffee. Oh, right, right here, Miss Larimore. All right, now, boys, you're all set. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, Miss Larimore. Thank you, boys. Before Miss Larimore. Before everybody. Oh, Billy. Oh, Daniel. We'll begin for the next meeting. How did it feel up in the fog, Miss Larimore? Were you frightened? Well, confidentially, I was scared to death. But this youngster wasn't. He played his harmonica like a hero. Excellent idea for a new number. Sing in the fog. Do you want a job with me, young man? You got an amateur program, too? <laughs> no. I'll put you on with Miss Larimore and pay you. Sure, sure. Get the gentlemen? They do the same number they did in the play. In the Golden Eagle Club, night at 11 o'clock. Gee, Bill, it's swell to have you here. <laughs> How do you feel? Great. What are you doing down here? Came to meet you. What, after all these years? Sure. Wait a minute. I'll take mine. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Let's get in here and have some... And wasn't scared? Is that... Oh. That's right. I think the men who pilot these planes are simply marvelous. How they can see where they're going in that awful fog. Why, it's like going blind. Two coffees, please. More? I left it flat. <laughs> how long are you going to stay? Well, that depends on how well they like me here. <laughs> uh, they'll like you. Shall we? Right. I'm beginning to get this brotherly devotion. Do you blame me? No, but what is she doing with Benet? She's going to sing at his club. That's too bad. Why? What's the matter with it? Well, the place is all right, but that Benet's fellow. Uh -huh. uh, pardon me, gentlemen. Oh, uh, no, not at all. Where did I leave this? Hello. Hello. Seems to be old homely. Don't I know you? Well, I know a fellow who used to know you. He used to talk about you all the time. He couldn't get his lessons in the classroom because he was watching you. And one time on a picnic, a grass snake got in the lunch basket and scared you. And that was the only time he ever kissed you. Charlie Davis. How are you, Connie? Well, I wouldn't have known you. You've changed, though. I didn't have any trouble picking you out. <laughs> well, how long has it been? About seven years? Something like that. <laughs> Gee, we did have a lot of fun, didn't we? Remember old Grumpy who had the penny candy store? Is he still around? Uh-huh. Well, tell me about everybody and everything. I guess everything's changed. Mm, not so much. Except the 610 comes in on time. <laughs> And the kids we knew were all grown up, except Jerry Phillips. He died. Oh. And Mary Johnson's married. Mary Johnson married? Oh, no. Outside of that, town's still the same. Wind, rain, fog. Mm, I recognize the fog. <laughs> Is he with you? Well, sure, you remember him. My brother, Bill. We've met. Oh, yes, of course. I knew your face was familiar. It's Larimore. Inspector Davis. Inspector? Police? No, post office. <laughs> It's been a long time since we played that. Yeah. 
Top of the morning, gentlemen. Well, welcome home, Bill. I see you made the front page. Oh, me? <laughs> Since when is my name Connie Larimore? Oh, no, I need down there. Oh, that. <laughs> well, went off pretty smooth. About 20 or 30 dollars short. Who did that? Nobody. The gold bullion was so soft it rubbed off on the canvas sacks in transit. Oh, go on. They have to burn the sacks to reclaim it. Uh, I'm Mr. Ritter. Oh, yes. Uh, will you see Mr. Davis, please? You can come in now. Sit down, Mr. Ritter. Thank you. I'm Inspector Davis. What is your trouble? Inspector Davis, I've lost all my money. I've been to lawyers and I've been to the police, but they tell me they can't do anything because I haven't any proof. Post office department is my last hope. And how did you lose your money? Uh, wife and I worked for 40 years and saved $20,000. <laughs> One day a man told me about a gold mine and he took all my money for stock. Hmm. Did you have any correspondence with this man? I mean, did you receive anything through the mails from him? No, they always came to my house. That's too bad. Mr. Ritter, I'd like to help you, but I don't see how that's possible. You see, we only handle things that come through the mail. Well, I, I sent the check through the mail. Was it registered? Yes. Have you got the registration receipt? Yes, I, I think so. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm, that's fine. Now we have something to work with. You come along with me, Mr. Ritter. Oh. Right this way, through this door. Thank you. They sent that through the mail. And they said it was straightened my nose. I've been wearing this thing for six weeks. And all I've got is a red nose. They're a bunch of crooks. Will you take care of Mr. Ritter? Have one of the clerks get all the details for me. <laughs> What's that? I don't know. Something must have happened to that guy out there. He's got a gadget. Just what is this? It's supposed to make you taller. An inch a month. And all it did for me was to sprain my neck and crack a couple of ribs. Did you buy this through the mail? Sure. I answered an advertisement. Have you got your envelopes and correspondence with you? No, I got them all right. Eugene, will you take care of this? Yes, sir. Have a click at all the details for me. Come along with me. Cost me $15 and I want it back. That's expensive necking. I wonder, Inspector, if this... Butch. Come here, Mr. Just step right over here. What are you going to do, Inspector? We're not going to hurt you. Just want to slip this over your head and see how it works. Where we are, just take it easy. There we are. Now. Mm -hmm. Does that hurt you? Not much. Does it hurt you now? That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Now, Butch, if you'll stay that way, I'll have a photograph taken of you. Inspector, may I see you just a moment? Where are you going? I'll be right back, Butch.
Hello, Connie. Oh, hello, Charlie. It just came. Thank you so much. How about having lunch with me today? I'm getting away a little early. Oh, I'd love to, Charlie, but I have to go to the post office and... What? You're kidding. Well, listen, so do I. I'll meet you there and we'll have lunch at Grumpy's. Remember where we used to go after school? Yeah, I'll wait for you upstairs in Bill's office. You can't miss it. All right. I'll meet you in an hour. Debbie, call Mr. Benez and tell him I can't possibly have lunch with the newspaper man. Something very important has come up. Yes, sir. Hi, Sultan. Hello, Charlie. Bill here? Yeah, go on in. What's the matter with your head? Oh, this? this It's a light. It's supposed to make hair grow. Oh, I get it. Making hair while the light shines, huh? We'll attend to it right away. Thank you very much. Not at all. Goodbye. Goodbye. What are you doing around here? Oh, just mailed a flock of bonds downstairs. Thought I'd come up and see you while I was here. Learning to be a drummer? That young man is supposed to improve your vision. You beat a tattoo on your eyeballs like this, you see, and... <laughs> There's one born every minute. You wanted me to be a post office inspector and waste my time with stuff like that. Do you know there are thousands of frauds like this? And everyone represents money taken from the people who can least afford it. They ought to know better. That's not the point. When the crooks use the mails, they make Uncle Sam a party to their transactions. You know, people have a lot of confidence in anything that comes through the mail. And it's our job to keep that confidence alive. Yeah. You know, there's something pretty comforting about the thought that, with no more insurance than a mere postage stamp, a man may entrust his entire life savings or his most personal secrets into the hands of absolute strangers. There's a lady out here to see you. Come in, Ramon. Post office? <laughs> That's in Charlie's department, I think. <laughs> <laughs> right over here, madam. Now then, what is your complaint? I was brought into this post office under false pretenses. Oh, Mr. Lunch. Hello. Can you imagine that, Inspector? Miss Larimore, see that he keeps his promise. All right, I'll buy your lunch. Mm -hmm, under protest. Thank you very much, Inspector. You're very welcome. Am I in the right place? What place are you looking for, madam? I'd like to see the post office inspector. I'm one of the inspectors. Won't you come in? Sit down, please. My name is Mrs. Compton. Mm -hmm. I sent for this machine. Oh, yes. It's one of those work-at-home gadgets, hmm? It makes socks. And they promised in the advertisements they would buy all the socks that you could make at home. And now they won't do it, is that right? How did you know that? Mrs. Compton, there are lots of these things sold all over the country. Have you any envelopes or correspondence? Yes. Do you think I can get my money back? I don't know. We'll make them keep their promises. And if they don't, we'll put them out of business. Oh, Butch, just a minute. Will you take care of Mrs. Compton, please? Have a clerk at all the details. Thank you, Inspector. You're very welcome. Oh, that poor old lady. Does this happen often? Yes, this is the game you call post office. It goes on and on. Excuse me a moment. Come in, Gil. Miss Larimore, Inspector Pottle. How do you do? You know Charlie. Oh, hello. Look at this. She's been advertising all over the country for her husband. She shouldn't have any trouble. Well, she doesn't. But when they answer her ads, she writes them for her old fare. She's collected over $10,000 in 14 months. Oh, yes. This is the girl you were telling me about. Yeah, I had her arrested this morning. Is she outside? Yes. Well, send her in, please. Oh. Why, she's beautiful. Take her in. Does this bring back memory? Mmm, lovely ones. Now I know what I missed all the time I was away. Does that include me? Yes, you're mixed up in it someplace. Could you make it more definite? I'll classify you after the sodas. There you are. Two chocolate sodas. You used to take one soda with two straws in it, remember? <laughs> Grumpy, you haven't changed a bit in all these years. Neither of you, except, uh, well, maybe you uh, put on a little weight. She's lost a thousand freckles, too. Will you two stop picking on me? Here's a present for you. I know you like it. You always did. Grumpy, jelly bean. This is the nicest present I've had in years. Come here, man. Yep. Now, what's all that about? 
It's because you're a cute old darling. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get me into trouble putting that lip salve all over my face. What about me? I bought the sodas. We only give favors with jelly beans. Grumpy. Two dollars worth of jelly beans. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are together, flying high. We're up in heaven, you and I. We'll be coming down to earth someday. But in the meantime, let's be gay. Let's have bluebirds on all our wallpaper, decorating our dreams. to it, isn't there? Think so? <laughs> I was talking about Connie. Yes. You usually are. You're not going overboard for that cafe singer, are you? Don't you like her? She's all right, but there aren't any buts. She's great. Good evening. Won't you sit with us for a few minutes? You mind? No, go right ahead. May I order something for you? Just coffee, please. Don't you drink? Yes, coffee. She's smarter than you are. I knew you'd see her good points. A waiter. Fresh coffee, please. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Are you being taken care of all right? Fine. And the food? Excellent. Then everything is all right? Everything. Everything but me. Mm -hmm. What's that all about? Bill made a crack last night at the airport. Venez was standing right behind him. And it still goes. Central Connie, get her away from the table. What's wrong? That young fool takes up all her time. It's not good for business. Nothing personal in it, of course. Come on. There's a telegram for you, Mr. Venez. Perhaps I don't know English. Read it. Maybe it's a tip on a horse. In yesterday's newspaper, you will find only yesterday's races. I'll get a paper and we'll find out. <laughs> don't look now, but I think bad news is on your right. I'll take it. Well, nothing doing. When I give a party, I give. Mm-mm. Can't start you in circulation again. Where did you get that? That? Have some respect for the aged, my girl. That's the grandpappy of all $10 bills. He collects them. It's a hobby. Collects them? Old bills? Sure. He's in charge of all the money that's taken out of circulation at the Federal Reserve Bank. Think of all the things that's bought. Relief for the sick, food for the hungry, jewels for the lovely. Mm -hmm, but it's too old to be out this late. Will it spend? Sure. Here. Oh, no, not if it belongs in your collection. Don't worry. In about two days, it'll come back to me at the bank. We'll give it the last fling before the graveyard. Tell me, do you bury them with full military honors? They don't bury them. They go back to Washington. About three million of the old boys are going back this week. You mean you personally take them to Washington and turn them in? No, I only escort them to the post office. From then on, they're Bill's headache. A postage stamp is the best insurance in the world. <laughs> right, Bill? Right. Only we don't talk so much about it. My favorite melody and my favorite girl. Shall we merge? It's an idea. If you get lonely, you can cut in. Thanks. Just try and cut in. <laughs> I don't think your brother cares so much for me. And Bill's suspicious of everything that hasn't a postage stamp on it. <laughs> Remember the last time I held you in my arms? Let me see. I think I was 12 and you were 14. I was 15. I just started a shave. <laughs> we did have a lot of fun, didn't we? Remember the picnics at Echo Lake? I remember the ants. The day I fell in the spring. Let's do it again. Just you and me. <laughs> well, I'll consider the picnic. But the springs are out. <laughs> so what is that page again? Page 10, column 2. Senate approves new tax plan. Yeah, that's their daily dozen. 
<laughs> Get a load of this. Night Club owner mysteriously slain. Fred Cummings, 40 years old, owner of the Jack and Lantern Night Club, was found dead in his office from a bullet wound early this morning. Maybe this is what it means. Alfred Carter, known to have financed many nightclubs, was questioned by the police and later released. Carter. What's that got to do with you? I owe Carter 50000 and I'm two months behind. That's a delicate way of telling me. So what? If you can't pay, you can't. He paid. Don't get that home James look on your face. We've just started. <laughs> Pardon, Miss Larimore. Mr. Benez would like to see you in his office. Well, she can't go. She's busy. Oh, I think I'd better. After all, he's the boss. I'll see you later. Hey, young fellow. How would you like a little fresh air? Oh, not yet. Oh, we're having a swell time, aren't we? Yes, swell. Besides, Connie's coming back. She said so. Look, if you keep on drinking any more coffee... You'll be picking blue and green spots off the wall. Want a drink? No, thanks. I'm having coffee downstairs. Young Davis, eh? Yes. Why? There are important guests here tonight who could do something for you and for a cafe. That wasn't in my contract. Do you mind helping me a little? No, of course not. You know I'll do all I can. Thanks. Charlie Davis is an old friend of mine. I'm very fond of him. But why waste your affection on a clerk? Ah, never judge the pearl by the oyster, Benez. Charlie has $3 million. What? Of course, it's a little old, but it's $3 million. Where would he get such an amount? At the Federal Reserve Bank. He has charge of the old lady's home for money. Of course, he'll be a pauper again soon, but... What are you talking about? Charlie's shipping $3 million in worn-out bills to Washington next week. He'd have to be fairly important to handle a job like that. Oh, you make fun of me. You, you dropped this, mister. I didn't drop it. I threw it. I wish I knew where the post office gets these confounded pins. Well, this is a murder case. It doesn't make any difference what kind of a case it is. We haven't the right to open anybody's mail. Well, all I need to crack this case wide open is to get a look at that letter. I'm sorry, we just can't do that. Well, why can't you? Nobody can touch the mail except the person to whom it's addressed. I'll tell you a carrier. And now the letter after it's delivered. I don't need anyone to tell me my business. I should have known better than to expect cooperation from you, fella. While you're speaking of cooperation, I think I have a case that might interest you. Now, wait a minute, Lieutenant. Gene, what about that insurance fraud case? Tell Lieutenant Ordway about it. I think this is going to be a big case. What's that? There's a gang around here that's collected over $50,000 from the insurance companies on false property damage and personal injury claims. That's so? They take old cars and bang them together, shove one over the cliff, then they roll in the dirt and beat each other up with clubs, cut themselves with razor blades and rub the skin off their arms and legs with sandpaper like this to make it look real. It's all here in this... But they made just one little mistake. Receiving insurance checks through the mail. Mm. There you are, Lieutenant... It's all yours. That's fine. Pick these people up right away. Thanks, Inspector. Don't mention it. And by the way, if you have any other justice that you'd like to have obstructed, why, uh, you let us know, won't you? You win. <laughs> This is Inspector Davis. Postmaster Long. Hello, Mr. Long. What's that? Yes. Yes, wait a minute. The floods hit Yarborough 100 miles above here, taking out the bridge and cut off the town. Yes? All right. I'll come myself. I'll leave by plane in an hour. I hope we hear. That's right. I'll hop over to Yarborough and see you boys later. I'll have a plane ready for you, Bill.
everything set? Yes. I done for some help. You already slammed some money on us. We can't do anything around here till after the flood. Come here, Postmaster. See that building over there? Yeah. We'll open a temporary office on the second floor. If the water gets up there, we'll move higher. We'll keep the post office open, flood or no flood. Get all your pouches together, or I'll take them on the plane with me. All right, Inspector. Come on, John. Get busy. I told the guy he couldn't send them through the mail, but he walked out and left them. I don't know what to do with them. There's no return address. Oh, the poor little things. We can't leave them like this. They'll starve. What are we going to feed them? That's right. What are we going to... I got it. Guinea pigs were just born to try things out on. I'll start with some of these ionized wall tablets. They're good for uh, general debility, lassitude, and head noises. You think you better take a chance? Sure. It's the scientist symbol. Come, pig. Come on. How far are we going? We'll ride on and on. Two people in an empty world. <laughs> Sounds attractive, but I have work to do tonight. Attention, everyone, please. We break in at this time for an important announcement. We are calling aid for emergency flood conditions. All police and firemen report to your station that members of the National Guard will assemble at their armories as soon as possible. We return you now to your local station. Must be pretty bad. You're a National Guard, aren't you? Yeah. I knew something could come up if we planned a picnic. Well, let's go to the armory and see how serious it is. You've got to get back to the cafe. Well, I can call a taxi. Why don't you take this car? Can you drive? Why, well, of course. You take the car and drop me at the armory. Then you'll be able to get the things we'll need for the picnic tomorrow. Picnic? <laughs> You're optimistic, aren't you? Listen, we're going to have that picnic if we have to pull out on a raft. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt this program for a special announcement from the mayor. Because of the floodwaters, which are spread over a wide area in this vicinity, all legionnaires are requested to report to their different legion halls. All members of the Citizen Safety Council, all men holding honorary commissions in the police and sheriff's departments report to the city hall and the sheriff's office. We better get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no danger here. Please, keep your seats. There's no cause for alarm. What's going on, Mac? Everybody's leaving. You better get up there and do something. The management wishes you to enjoy the remainder of our evening's entertainment. That's a swell idea. How dry I am. How dry I am. Oh, wet part of this here, yeah. How dry I am. Take a look at me. Oh, say, can you see how dry I carriers get out this morning, Postmaster? Yes, and the railway post office is going north on schedule. They'll start, but they won't get very far. I just flew in from there. Better call in all your auxiliary carriers. Send some of your men down to the river to get all the small boats they can. I'll do that right away. Gene, get the war department on the teletype. Ask them to assign four planes to this office to remove the mail. Tell them this airport here will be underwater in four or five hours. 
This is Dr. Doyle, the health officer. This is Inspector Davis, Doctor. How do you do, Doctor? Inspector, you know the sudden rise of floodwaters has put us in a dangerous position. I've ordered vaccines, serum, and medical supplies for the emergency. But now I understand the flood water's rising so fast, the trains may not be able to get through. If the trains can't get through, we'll use airplanes. If we can't do it with airplanes, we'll use boats. Your vaccines and supplies will be here, so don't you worry. The mails are open and they're going to remain open. See you later. All right. Will you listen just a moment, please? We need two classes of workers, one to go into the field and one to stay here at the station. Now then, make your choice. The field workers will go right down that corridor and report to Miss Wilson in room 439. The hospital workers will step up here to my desk. What is your name, please? Ethel Jackson. And yours? Connie Larimore. Police are now appropriating and equipping them with radios to take the regular automobiles, which except in a few in the south, are useless. The communication have been washed out except this, which is now operating on our own emergency generator system. Station WZZ sends greetings to Red World from a maroon city. And we are now going to turn over the facility to some of the flood survivors. They may send messages to their friends and relatives in other parts of the country. What is your name, please? Uh, my name is Mrs. John Mead. And to whom do you wish to speak? I'd like to speak to my son, Joseph, in Dallas, Texas. Your son, Joseph Mead, in Dallas, Texas. Yes, Joseph Mead in Dallas, Texas. If anyone hears this message that knows Joseph, will they please relay it to him? Try to close to the microphone here. I'm all right. The flood is very bad. We've lost our house. And, and father, father is missing. I, What's your name? Billy Arnold. Billy Arnold. And who do you want to talk to? Ma. Your Ma? And where? D.C. Washington, D.C. See what we can do here. Little Billy Arnold here is calling his mother in Washington, D.C. Arnold calling Mrs. Arnold in Washington. Talk right into it. Say, Ma, Daddy's in the hospital. He got hurt helping some people out of the water. I think he wants you to come back. Let me talk. I got Alice here. Wait a minute. Come on. Hello, Aunt Louise. I got my party dress wet when I saved Buster. Can you hear me? You're wasting time trying to call here. Carter says 24 hours, he means hours. You've got to do something. I'm trying to tell you. But how shall I know Connie's information? She was only kidding about that money. Well, she may have been kidding the right dope. I just checked up on it. That bundles up all that old money and sends it mail. There's three million out tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, it leaves the stuff as a one and then goes out of the post office. We've got two cracks at it. Dee, such a chance. It was the best time to do it. While the fun, the three million dollars a try. men were there? Three. What kind of a car were they driving? Gray sedan. A gray sedan. Bandits believed escaping south on Highway 14. Held up by a United States mail truck. Killed the driver and escaped with three million dollars in cash. Most office inspectors are now investigating. The north side of the town is underwater. The business district is going under fast, the water climbing at the rate of a foot an hour. And by tonight, the full force of the disaster will be felt. How's everything going? The delivery platform's underwater. I'm afraid the workroom will be underwater tonight. 
and make a work come out of my office. Get your northbound mail ready for the planes. The boats will take you down to Laurel Wraith Avenue and transfer you to a truck. From there, you'll go to the airport. Inspector Richards will go with you. Go, oh, Bill. I went to the bank and there are only three people who know that money was being shipped. Who are they? Freeman, head of the shipping department. Ralph Massey, a clerk. And... But who was the third? Your brother, Charlie. Can you come upstairs, Inspector, please? What for? That man Ritter's up there. Ritter? Well, tell him to come back some well, other time. He said time. it's important. All right. You stay here, Butch, and give him a hand. Everything's got to be upstairs before this place is underwater. Come on, Pardo. Yeah. Hello, Inspector. I've got something that might interest you. Where did you get this bag? In a car that was caught by the flood. Where? Near my shop. Is it there now? Yes, I think so. Let's go have a look at it. All right. License plate. I don't need a license plate. Just a minute, Inspector, please. I've got to tell you something. Look, Inspector. Twenty thousand dollars. Where'd you get this? It was in the car with the mail bags. Twenty thousand dollars? That's just about what was stolen from you, isn't it? Yes. Thanks, Mr. Ritter. If these men are caught, there's going to be a reward. And I'll see to it that you get your share. <laughs> Come on, Gil. Why do you keep saying it was my car? There are thousands of cars like mine. Not with a thing like this on the radio dial. You found that in the holdup car? You knew that money was being shipped and your car was used in the holdup. Now, come on, tell me about it. I... I can't. What do you mean, you can't? Listen, Bill, I know this puts me in an awkward position, but there's something about it I can't tell you now. But why? Trust me, will you, Bill? Give me a couple of hours to find out about this. Do you realize what you're asking, Charlie? This is my job. But if you'll just give me a couple of hours, I know I can find out about this. Two hours might be too late. Give me a break. And then if you want to have me arrested... Who are you covering up? Listen, Bill, just a couple of hours. I won't let you down. All right, Charlie. You haven't let me down yet, and... I know you won't this time. You go ahead and I'll expect you in my office in two hours. And make sure you're there. Thanks, Bill. I'll be there. He'll be here. But it's been more than two hours already. You'd better let us handle this. We know how you feel, Bill, and it's not your fault. But two hours is a long time. He's not going to run away. No, but somebody is. They've already had time to get across the state line. Why didn't you bring him in? I tell you, he'll be here. Well, I hope so, Bill, for your sake. Come on in. We'll be in Butch's office if you need us, Bill. Thanks. I found how my car got mixed up in this. It was stolen from Connie. Stolen? Yes. I expected something more original from you. She doesn't know anything about the robbery. I only know what Charlie told me. You also knew that $3 million was going to leave the post office for Washington. No, I didn't. I sat at the table with you the other night when he told you. Who did you talk to about it? Well, I don't remember saying anything. You must have told someone. Who was it? Wait a minute, Bill. Connie's no crook. You don't have to talk to her like that. Keep quiet. I'll handle this. You've been making cracks about Connie ever since she came. Now let her alone. You keep quiet and sit down. I won't sit down. If you want to find out anything, why don't you pick on me? You're asking questions like a stupid cop. Sit down! Wait a minute. I did mention that money. I mentioned it to Benez. Benez? But it wasn't important. I, I'm just kidding. Kidding? Three million dollars stolen, a post office employee murdered, and that's what you call kidding. Oh, no. So Benes pulled this job, huh? Well, I don't know. I... I don't see how he could. Stop being naive. You're in this too up to your neck. Where is Benes now? I don't know. You waited until he got miles away so you could come down here and make a grandstand play, is that it? Listen, I don't know any more about this than you do, which is apparently nothing. That's how we start with every case. Nothing. And so I'm going to start with you. Well... What do you want me to do? Go back to your work until I call you. And that goes for you, too. Get away from that window. I don't see what we're waiting for. A boat, you fool, a boat. What's the matter with the boat we came in? We need a speedboat to get away. 
The longer we stay here, the worse it's going to be. If you're in a hurry, why don't you start swimming then? Oh, keep quiet. Could get a speedboat and leave like... There's a young lady out here wants to see you, Lieutenant. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, Connie. Well, what are you doing here? Listen, Charlie. I think I know where Benez is. I found a private address he wrote me in a letter about a contract. Here, give it to Bill. No, I won't give it up. I'll handle this myself. But, Charlie, Bill can handle these things so much better. We can't get him now anyway. The phones are dead. Well, we've got to do something about it. I don't think Benez had anything to do with it, but your brother does. Yeah, Bill thinks you and I are mixed up in this. That's why we've got to straighten this out ourselves. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, let's see if Benez is there now. Oh, you'd better stay out of this. But why? I'm in it as much as you are. Connie, this is no job for you. How do you know it isn't? I can handle him better than you can anyway. I know him. Well, maybe you're right. We'll take a National Guard boat. See what else I can find. All right. Say, here's an idea. What is it? It's a tax receipt from the apartment house. An apartment house? Where? On the other side of town. Well, I guess he doesn't live there. Well, probably not, but he owns the place. He must have somewhere to hide. He can't get out of town. Well, it's not much of a lead. It's as much as we ever have. It may be just enough. Wait a minute, Connie. You're not going up there alone. Don't be silly. Nothing's going to happen. Benez might not even be here. Yeah, but what if he is? I'd better go with you. No, Charlie. Please. But Connie... Charlie, I... you're acting as though I were going in a lion's den. Now, be reasonable. I can handle him. If you wet, it would spoil everything. He wouldn't talk with you around. All right. But hurry. all over town for you, Benez. Why didn't you let me know where you were? What are you doing down here? Oh, I'm in an awful jam. And so are you. Did you know it? Me? Yes, it's about that mail robbery. You know. Mail robbery? You mean you don't know anything about it? Certainly not. Oh, well, that's what I thought. Will you come with me and tell that to the postal inspectors? What have I got to do with it? Well, you see, the car that was used in the robbery was one that I had borrowed from someone. Yes? They know that I told you about the money being shipped. You remember. So they think we were working together. They think you did it. Ridiculous. Of course. But we've got to prove it to them. Will you come? Well, I'm pretty busy here. Have you got a good fast boat so I can get back here quickly? Yes, I came in a National Guard speedboat. Yeah, it's down there and it's that young Davis in it. Young Davis, eh? Bring Davis up here. What for? Well, I think the boat will be a little too crowded. Benez? You did do it. Get him up here. Hey, Davis! This Laramore wants you to come up. We are one block wrong. We are in the back of these buildings instead of the front. I know it, Gil. That's how we're going up there, the back way. I think this is it. Charlie! What happened? The Nez men slugged me. Where's Connie? Connie? Did she go off with him? Sure. Come on, bottle. Hello? Hello? Calling 
WLPD. WLPD. Hello, police department. This is Davis. We've located the mail truck bandits. Please have a couple of boats in search. Calling police boats number four and five. Calling police boats number four and five. Go south somewhere below power plant and try to contact Inspector Davis in police boat number two. We'll split up as soon as we can. We should have stayed where we were. There must be a here somewhere. That's them. Go ahead. It's marvelous. And I did it. Yeah, I know. It's a scientist, Andy. I told you we were going to have that picnic. <laughs> no cheating. You know what I wished for? No, what? That you'd get your wish. <laughs> hello? Oh, hello, Bill. Where are you? Oh, that's too bad. Well, I hope you can arrange it with Washington so you can come to our wedding tomorrow. I wish you could come up now. We're waiting for you. We have potato salad and chicken. We'll have bluebirds on all our wallpaper decorating our dream. Shy little rosebuds on the china ware. Is there anything I can do for you? My name is Mrs. Cups, and I sent away for this machine. One of those work-at-home gadgets, huh? Why, have you seen them before? Oh, yes. Lots of them. We'll have showers, lots of showers, that's certain. So let's paint a rainbow on the shower curtain. 